Hey folks, in Microsoft Edge DevTools, there's a really cool panel called the 3D View, which allows you to debug your website in three dimensions. It's a really interesting way to debug DOM nesting problems or Zindex stacking issues or even performance problems. So let's take a look together. We'll go through a few websites and we'll see how we can use this tool. First of all, if you want to read documentation about it, uh, head over to the Microsoft Edge Docs website and you'll find information about the tool itself and how to use the keyboard and uh, all of that stuff. I've also created a tips page on my website devtoolstips.org uh, with a really quick uh, information about how to open the tool and that kind of stuff. But let's, you know, press Control shift i and open DevTools on this website here, the Microsoft Docs website, and open the 3D view. So I click on the plus button, click on 3D view, uh, and go through the tool. The first one that I'd like to talk about, because uh, there are three modes, Zindex, DOM, and Composited Layer. The first one I think is the simplest is the DOM uh, mode. Uh, it's the simplest because the way it works is it shows you all of the elements in the DOM tree and it organizes them according to how deeply nested they are. So if we take a look at the 3D scene here, the ones that are in dark blue at the bottom of the sort of pyramid or tower buildings, uh, that's going to be the lowest one in the DOM tree, so the HTML or body element. And the ones at the top here, like the little pink ones, are leaves of the DOM tree. So it could be like a link or a button or something that appears at the very top of the DOM tree. So you can move around. I hold the left click button on my mouse here, which allows me to rotate the scene uh, in any angle that I want to be able to see better. If I hold the right click button and then move, I can pan uh, in the scene, which I can also do using those arrow buttons at the bottom of the canvas. And I can zoom either using the slider here or using my mouse uh, wheel as well or track that or whatever. Uh, if you get lost because you've moved like too far and you've lost track, you can reset the camera using the top button here, which will get you back to where you started. And if stuff change in the page, like for example, let me open a few subsections in the menu here. Uh, as you can see, this menu area here uh, did not update, but you can force it by retaking a snapshot. Taking a snapshot is a fairly slow operation because it needs to check the entire page, like get all of the DOM elements and then paint this 3D scene. So that's why there's a button and it doesn't happen live. But now that I've done it, you can see the elements, like the new menus have appeared here. One more thing that's really cool uh, is the 3D view actually works together with the element panel. So if you right click on the 3D view panel and you move to button, then you can see both panels at the same time in a split view way. Uh, and the way that this works is you can click in the 3D view and it will select the corresponding element in the elements panel. So you can take a look at the CSS rules, for example, and understand why things are the way they are. Now let's take a look at a different website, see what we get. Move to the Microsoft Edge website, bring DevTools open as well, uh, open the 3D view there as well. And it's a very different landscape. It's interesting because some things seem to be out of the viewport, right? Those things that are going down here, or it seems to be very, very uh, why there are lots of lots of elements left and right that probably seem to be that probably are out of the viewport and those are probably those scrolling quotes here uh, it's interesting as well to use the tool to see the nesting of DOM elements you can see here there are like a dozen or so nested elements that appear to have exactly the same size uh, so let me move this 3D view to the bottom so we can see both at the same time. As I click through those ones, you can see that they appear to be coming from these very long list of nested divs. There's a div, ID app, layout, main, home, slide container, headline pop-up, and those don't really seem to be containing anything else. 
So there's a long list of nested divs that perhaps could be simplified, but you know, uh, they're probably here for a reason. But in your case, you know, you can use this, like when you see a high tower like this, you can use this to sort of understand what's going on and, and maybe investigate a potential problem. Now let's take a look at Z index. So head over to the Z index mode and I'll bring this over to the top so we can see everything better. Same thing here, you've got a 3D scene, you can move around with the same mouse buttons, but the information shown here is completely different. What the 3D view now shows you is the stacking context tree. Uh, and to understand this a little bit better, you should definitely head over to the stacking context MDN page on the MDN web docs uh, website, because it explains everything about what a stacking context is. And I think it's a fairly misunderstood problem that, I, that is causing a lot of frustration among web developers. And it's great to know about stacking context. Uh, so let's not go into too many details here, uh, but when you have a Z-index problem, you can definitely use this tool to walk around the scene in 3D and you'll see immediately why an element is above another one. You can click on it, again, jump over to the elements panel, see the CSS properties that may be affecting the stacking context positioning for that particular element. Uh, you can display the labels or not. You can show only the stacking context which is also super useful if you're looking for that information. And again, you can reset the camera, retake the snapshot and move around the scene using the, the buttons and sliders. Now let's take a look at composited layers in the 3D view. So this is the last tab in the tool and we're gonna use this website to take a look at it. Uh, it works the same as the two other modes where you can pan around and, and rotate in the scene or move or zoom, etc. But it doesn't show the same information. It shows you the composited layers. And layers are a way for the browser to be more effective at rendering your web page. If the browser sees that you've positioned an element absolutely on the page, for example, it can take the decision to move this element in a separate layer in the final uh, image that is rendered in the viewport so that it can re-render it quicker next time without having to re-render the full page again. If your web page has just one layer, uh, every time an element moves in JavaScript, for example, or a CSS animation uh, makes an element bigger or smaller, the browser is gonna have to recreate the entire layout and repaint all of the pixels in the entire layer, which could be fairly big and time intensive. If, however, your page is organized in many different layers, each of them rather small, if one of them changes, the browser doesn't have to re-render and repaint the entire rest of the layers. Only one has changed, so it can uh, repaint only that one and stitch it together with the other ones in the right place and compose it the final image. So if we take a look at this website, for example, you can see that there's a few layers, not too many, but like, for example, here, this navigation bar at the top, this header bar, seems to be its own layer. It has a uh, dimensions here, uh, 1500 by 120. Um, we have some information about it, paint count, memory estimate, which can be interesting to uh, understand performance. We can take a look at it here in the DOM tree, uh, and it seems to be its own layer because it's a it's using Zindex 3 and position sticky. So it's like not in the normal flow of the page anymore. It's been taken out of it, which, you know, when I scroll, we can see that it remains here, which means that as I scroll, the browser doesn't have to re-render everything. It may already have rendered the scrolling layer independently of the header layer and it just has to stitch them up again in the right place. In fact, if we switch over here, we can see it happen live. As I scroll, I can see it happen in the page here. So if you have an animation on your website that moves elements around in a page uh, and uses, for example, CSS or JavaScript, and you notice that something is running a little bit slow when that happens, you know, definitely take a look at the composited layers section of the 3D tool to try and understand whether things are in their own layers or if they are not. Because if they're not in their, in their own layers 
and there's a lot of content in one of those layers that getting fairly big, it may be the reason why the animation is getting slow. So that's it, I hope this was useful and that you're gonna give the 3D view a try. Thanks for watching!